chapter three will tell us, and uh, you would try to convey, you know, the following concept as a learning objectives. So number one, uh, the internal alignment will uh, determine, you know, that uh, it is important uh, package in the pay policy uh, issues and how uh, we would like to understand and evaluate uh, the internal alignment. The chapter will also uh, discuss no, the three key factors that will define an internal uh, pay structure. And then also it will identify and describe how external and organizational factors will shape the design of pay structures even. Uh, and then among others, so uh, the, uh, it will also uh, let us know and discuss the impact, the impact of internal pay structures on efficiency, fairness, compliance in the pay system even. So that is how, uh, what part of the uh, learning objectives of, uh, you know, in the discussion of chapter three. Now, uh, the key points I know that we're going to be discussing a while ago are, number one is the compensation strategy, you know, uh, combined with the internal alignment. You know? So uh, when you say uh, uh, it, internal alignment, it's uh, actually it's setting objectives is uh, the first issue in strategic approach. So for the compensation, for you to be able to strategize, you have to consider the internal alignment. For you to be able to, yeah, more or less, uh, now setting it, uh, setting the objectives uh, on the uh, issue of strategic approach. And then second, the internal alignment uh, addresses the pay relationships inside the organization. And then uh, number three would be a, uh, the internal alignment uh, address the logic that will that underlies uh, this uh, relationship as a whole, and the relationship form a pay structure that should support the organization strategy, and it will also support the workflow and motivate behavior towards the fulfillment of the organizational objectives. Now, how do we define the internal alignment? So, uh, it is actually often called uh, the internal equity. So, when you say internal equity, it uh, refers, among others, to the pay relationships among different jobs and skills with competencies within a single organization. So, remember, job skills, competencies, no, is the key. Now, um, the pay structure, however, is defined and referred to as to the array of pay rates for different work or skills within a single organization. Now, a number of levels differs no, accordingly based on qualification, education, and experience. So, the number of levels, the differentials in pay between the levels should be significant and distinguishable by each level no, to give importance to the position. And the criteria used to determine those differences will describe the pay structure. Now, what would be the support of the organization strategy? So, an organization strategy would need to support important aspects that go into maintaining its competitive advantage over the other industry-related. Now, number two, the challenge is to develop a pay structure that support the efficient flow of the work and the design of the organization. For example, uh, a, a company like Merrill Lynch. In Merrill Lynch, it is an investment um, advisor. Traditionally, he never emphasizes personal long-term relationship among their clients. You know, so uh, you, you persuade clients, but on a professional level. So. They, they, uh, they invest no, in, in, in your proposals. And then the differences in clients' needs even, depending on the client's net worth, among other things, now propelled Merrill Lynch to redesign the flow of work to better reflect its client's needs and to increase its profit eventually. So fitting it to the I don't know, client's needs no, according to the concept. And then... Uh, another support workload that are needed is uh, to support the new financial advisor, the job structure. Mary Lynch has designed, no, according to the uh, examples given by the book, 
Mary Lynn has designed a new pay structure uh, that uh, including the base pay ranges from about 125,000 US dollars annual to 1 million even no? so and uh, yeah they're, they're very aggressive even in uh, in uh, in bonuses and stock incentives and uh, yeah about 30 to 90 percent of total cost compensation were provided and it is a very good uh, yeah pay structure uh, yeah recommendations are made by Mary Lynch and they were you know employees are happy about it a very good uh, pay structure design would motivate behavior of the employees uh, so the challenges is to design pay structures so uh, they engage employees to help achieve the goals of the organization and then the criteria on which the structure is based should uh, make uh, clear the relationship between its job and the organization's goals and objectives no this is an example of a line of sight remember no line of sight no so uh, there and then another one is uh, the more employees are able to see the link between their work the work of others and the organizational's direction through its objectives and goals the more likely they will be able to achieve the objectives because they are going to be inspired and motivated by it because they're very clear about the directions and they're very clear about the pay structure that they will be engaging you know, later on now uh, uh organization varies you know, in, in terms of uh, pay structure designs so the number of levels you now we we we, you know, we tackle that so one feature of any pay structure it is is uh, it's the hierarchical nature so meaning the number of levels and the reporting relationship you no know, should be based on hierarchical structures so one level at a time you now for you know to give importance and clear uh, yeah, dissemination of information and then some are more hierarchical with multiple levels you now others are compressed with few levels so differently you no know, although it's hierarchical but then apparently there are different approaches even okay uh, yeah uh, differentials no so when you say differentials the pay differences among levels are referred to as differentials so you remember no level one level two and three so in between are diff pay differentials now differentials should be based on clearly defined criteria so what are these no number one it should be based on knowledge and skills the working conditions related to the differences in the value of the work to the organization when you say working conditions well the painter of a building has to have a different pay package to the cleaner of a, you know tall buildings no? the glass in the externals you know all of those things no? so uh, the riskier and the more skilled are being paid accordingly you now based on talent and yeah and skills so uh, there no so and then one intention of these differentials is to uh, motivate people you not know, to strive for promotion even or yeah for high paying level you no know? so that's uh, their aim and, yeah aiming for you know probably promotion now uh, exploring the pay structure you know, so of a company so uh, criteria is also one of the uh, uh, yeah uh, one of the uh, 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 structures that varies among uh, corporations you know in organization so when you say criteria what are these so de definitely this has content and value you know, when you say content it refers to the work you know, performed in a job and how it gets done in terms of task in terms of uh, behavior, in terms of knowledge that are required no, in the completion of that particular work to be performed. Now, a structure based on content uh, typically ranks jobs based on skills required. Uh, complexity of the task even are also considered. And problem solving, no, uh, yeah, has to have, uh, you know, the keen for, uh, you know, decision making in problem solving and uh, the responsibility that goes with it afterwards so uh, there now 
that is content. Now, what about value? Uh, the value refers to the work, worth of the work. Worth of the work, no? remember, no? value. Uh, it is based on the value of work that is focuses on the relative contribution of the skills, the tasks, and responsibilities altogether of a particular organizational goal. So that's value. Now, how do they uh, you know, embrace it no? and accept it? In addition to relative contribution is the external market value. So for example, uh, what competitors pay uh, for this kind of job, no? so relatively, no? so they compare it, no? the external factors. So yeah, that's it. No? And then rates agreed upon through collective bargaining. So there are you know, negotiations all along no? after a while. And then oh, definitely the legislated rates may be also included. So there are prevailing uh, uh, government approved no, uh, yeah, government approved pay package that you will have to reconcile with. And then eventually, you know, if you're going to be hiring a highly skilled and then coming from an expert on his field and really capable of doing the job, so why not, you know, uh, make a collective bargaining, you know, between you and that particular uh, job skilled, uh, you know, labor. You know? So that's uh, how we differ it. Now, uh, the use value reflects the value of goods or services an employee produces in a job. So that is how we use an exchange value defined. No? So uh, use value no, is reflecting the value of goods or services of that particular employee that uh, yeah, he, he produces as an output in a job. Now similar job content in two different companies may be fulfilled differently. So based on how it contributes to the goals and mission and the vision of uh, the organization. Now, the exchange value, however, is uh, whatever weights the employer and the employee agreed upon. So there is about the consensus of both parties uh, agree you know, on the job. The same work content in the same company may vary or may have different exchange values based on probably different uh, geographies, no? different uh, you know, points of contention for both parties. Now, the difference between exchange value and the use value also surfaces when one firm acquired one another. So, uh, for example, IBM when they uh, acquired uh, the Price Waterhouse Cooper uh, PwC. You know? So, uh, yeah. So the the consensus between two parties uh, differ you know, accordingly you know, based on uh, the internal pay structure of IBM, and then reconciling it with. Uh, with Price Waterhouse Cooper, no, as a, uh, yeah, the one that were uh, acquired by IBM. So, but in most cases, the one who acquires it will prevail. No, the internal structure, pay structure of that particular company. In this case, uh, IBM will uh, the one is going to be prevailing. Now, uh, uh, comparing job and person based structure. A job based structure relies on the work content. Uh, what is the work content that we're referring to here? So number one is the task, the behavior, and the responsibilities that goes with it. Now, however, a person-based structure is uh, shift the focuses on the to the employees rather, based on his skills, based on, on his knowledge, or based on his competencies even. So the employee possesses uh, having those kind of uh, you know uh, qualifications. Would I don't know would, uh, would be used no in, in uh, would be used I know, as a basis for pay structure, but in reality we find job descriptions referring to both the job and the person. So that's the reality, you know, So there. Now, what shapes the internal structures? So, uh, well, number one, shaping the internal structures with the command, you know, coming from the influences coming from the external factors, which is the economic pressures. So the supply and demand for labor compi combined with supply and demand for products and services will affect internal pay structures. Uh, given that, uh, the examples of various theories about the uh, effects of supply and demand for labor. Uh, for example, Adam Smith advocated 
on letting economic market forces influence pay structures. He ascribed uh, both an exchange value and the use value to human resources. Now another one is Karl Marx. Uh, Karl Marx uh, said that uh, employers unfairly pocketed the surplus value created by the difference between use and exchange value of the employee. Now he urged workers to overthrow capitalistic systems to become individual owners and reap the full use of their labor. So therefore, there's a yeah, the notions that uh, there's going to be uh, a share, you know, a share of uh, yeah profit for the capitalist from the capitalist rather. Another theorist uh, proposed in the late 19th century is about the uh, marginal productivity and proposes that employers do use value, uh, do use value, you know, in favor, and then thus uh, the pay differences among the job levels. Uh, reflect differences in use value associated with different jobs. So differences uh, in relative productivity will provide a rationale for the internal pay structure. Now, there now, so uh, these are uh, some of the examples of various theories about the supply and demand, okay, for labor. Now, uh, another one is the good examples of uh, the effects of supply and demand for products and services are so turbulent changes in competitors' products and services, and customers' taste force organization to redesign workflow and require employees to continuously learn new skills. Now, uh, unpredictable external conditions also require that pay structures suppose uh, support the agile organizations, and the flexible employees. So these are the two, no, that a very good example on the effects of the supply uh, and demand for products and services. No? So when the turbulent changes in competitors, no? and, and comp among comp competitors rather, and the unpredictable external conditions are good example of it. Now, another one in the external factors are the government policies, laws, and regulations. So, uh, in the book, I stated that the U.S. You know, equal in, uh, unemployment legislation will prohibit the pay uh, systems that discriminate on the basis of gender, race, and religion, and national origin. So, uh, we have also uh, similar no, legislation. Uh, the Philippine legislation is uh, yeah, the, uh, because the book would warrant uh, an example and concept about the U.S. origin. But similarly, we have, uh, you know, the parallel no, uh, legal basis for this. So you're talking about gender, discrimination on gender, race, religion, age, and national origin. Now, uh, another one is the internal pay structure may contain any number of levels, any number of levels with differentials of any size, as long as the criteria for setting them are not based on those discriminatory aspects, gender, race, religion, national origin, and age. No? Now, pay-related legislation often attempts to regulate uh, economic forces to achieve uh, social welfare objectives by through minimums, no? minimum wage loss, minimum, uh, yeah, maximum special uh, reporting requirement for executive pay even so uh, they set up for the executive pay for a certain acceptable and uh, yeah, ethical levels now pay uh, related legislation also aims uh, at differentials via living wage no? in several US cities require minimum hourly rates now wage rates above the requirements by the federal or of the federal laws here also there are some issues no, regarding uh, yeah, the living wage, no, uh, conduction, so there. Now, the anticipated outcome of such legislation is uh, a flatter, more compressed structure of wage, rates in, in the society. So it happens, no, anticipated outcome, no, so flat, more flatter, no? so that is how the design is being, you know, aligned, no, accordingly.
one of the external factors uh, that is going to be discussed is the external stakeholders. Now, <clears throat> what are these? Ano? The uh, external stakeholders comprises of unions, stockholders, political groups you know, that has uh, all have a stake in the formulating the internal pay structures. Now, unions seek small pay differences among job and seniority-based promotion to promote solidarity among the members you know, of the uh, business and organization. Now, another one is the stockholders are concerned about the gap between the executive level and the employee pay levels. They are pressuring companies to control or uh, better uh, justify the executive pay that the, you know, the executive are getting. So, it is a known fact that uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, executive level uh, are, you know, uh, they have uh, an enormous no, discrepancies from the employee level to the executive level pay. And then, stockholders are concerned about their, no, on top of the uh, being an executive uh, the disparity, uh, they are pressuring companies also no, to uh, control or better justify no, the, the, those uh, disparities between uh, the gap between the employee pay and the executive pay. Now, uh, the internal alignment, however, are uh, focuses on, on pay relationship within the organization. So that is how we see it you know, about this uh, alignment. Another culture, uh, another external factors is the cultures and customs. Now, culture is defined as uh, the mental programming or processing information that uh, people share in common. So, uh, such shared mind, the uh, mind setting may form a judgment of uh, what size pay differential is fair no? and just for uh, it to consider. Now, societal values in the 14th century uh, Western Europe uh, saw the Christian church endorse a uh, just wage doctrine. So, they were, they were the ones who instigated it and introduced it. And so, uh, it is a structure of wages supporting existing class structure. So they are being classified you know, depending on classes. Uh, uh, ignoring you know, market factors, so uh, such as uh, skill shortage, appropriate wages were set according to the class of society. So they circumvent you know, some of the areas of uh, consensus there. Now even today, cultural factors continue to uh, shape pay structures. Global competitors and uh, aging workforce are influences you know, for these decisions you know, and have made the age-based pay structures very expensive yeah, because of a lot of benefits are needed and support of wage you know, structures and design should be fitted in you know, based on age. Now, organizational factor uh, factors are classified as a strategy. So the key premise of a strategic perspective is uh, if a pay structures, global competitors and an aging workforce have uh, made age-based pay structure very expensive. No? So as I've said a while ago, now the uh, strategy would be the key premise of a uh, uh, the key premise would be if a pay structure is not aligned with the organization's strategy, it may become an obstacle, no, to the success of the. Uh, the organization in itself. Now, the challenge is to develop structures uh, that is aligned and adaptable no, in the coming, in the future, no, as part of the forecast in the design of a uh, organization package. Now, the organization factors also uh, considers uh, human capital. So, therefore, uh, human capital, uh, what are needed there, no, and uh, being uh, part of uh, you know uh, seeking out you know, as a qualification would be education, uh, yeah, experience, knowledge, abilities, and uh, skills. No, so there there are testings and you know, there are tests for you to determine that uh, they possess such uh, qualifications. Now and it gives an, uh, a major influence in the inter in structuring the internal pay structures. Now, the greater the value added by the skills and experience, the more pay those skills will command no, the market. 
So that is how, you know, they, uh, they equate it. You know? Now, another one, organizational factors, is the work design in itself. Uh, what is needed no? and uh, what is, uh, has to be uh, emphasized? It is work design, technology, you know, used to produce goods and services that influences the organizational design. Remember the technology, you know, so, uh, and then uh, work even to be performed. You know, so the technology designing work, you no know, organizationally uh, yeah, capable you know, of uh, in the design of work, you know, and the skills and knowledge required to perform the work. Now, several factors are affecting the nature of, this, of work design. So what are these? You know, number one is the use of non-employees and the layering. You know, so uh, veering away with all those uh, yeah, layers. Now, pay for non-employees is based on the internal structure of their home employer rather than the internal structure of the employer for whom they are currently providing services. And then another one is that uh, these uh, professionals could be provided through temporary work suppliers or outsourcing specialists. And then another one is delayering. So a while ago I talked about the delayering. So uh, uh, it is affecting work design in several ways. You know? So taking out you know, some of the layers. So while entered level of work are disappearing from some jobs, other jobs are being enlarged via added responsibilities. So delaying actually changes the job's value and the job itself is structure as a whole. So it fosters even the use of self-managed teams. So that's uh, how the work design is being uh, considered you know, for the organizational factors. Another organizational factors is the overall HR policies. No? So what are these? Organizations, other HR policies influence internal pay structures even. So, for example, uh, many organizations uh, tie money to promotions, no, to induce employees to apply for higher level positions. No, so yeah, that's it. They lure them. However, some organizations uh, offer a bigger responsibility or grander job title with little or not pay differentials to induce employees to apply to uh, to I don't know for promotions. So they would rather stay in their uh, level rather than applying without any uh, you know, significant increase in their salaries because that would only command an added responsibility for them and that they don't like that. Now uh, the internal labor market. No? So how do we, yeah, how do we uh, integrate that in the concept? So combining the external and organizational factors is one. So. The internal labor markets refer to uh, to rules and procedures that determine the pay for different jobs within a single organization. And then number two, it allocates employees among the different jobs. So that is labor market. No? Now, the external factors are dominant influences on the pay structure offered no, for entry jobs. No? But the pay differences for uh, non-entry job tend to reflect the organization's internal factors. So that is the internal labor market. No? Okay? Now, employee acceptance is very much important. It's a key factor. No? So uh, there. So uh, it's a very good uh, example of the internal labor market. So the employee acceptance is a key factor for it. Employees judge the fairness of their pay through multiple pay comparison with pay paid to others for similar work to assess the fairness of the pay structure. Uh, well, an important factor also a factor influencing the, influ uh, the internal pay structure is, uh, is ac acceptability you know, to uh, the employees involved in the negotiation. Now, so two sources of fairness are important. So, what are these? So, number one is procedural justice. Uh, when you say procedural, uh, the procedures for determining the pay structure. No? So, you follow certain procedures. That is procedural justice. Uh, you have engaged with the proper protocols no? and the adherence to the requirements even. 
And then the other one is distributive justice. No? So procedural and distributive justice. The result of those procedures, example, the pay structure in itself, right, the right to an attorney and the right, uh, uh, yeah, this register, uh, I'm sorry, distributive, yeah, that's it, ano? Distributive is the result of those procedures, especially the pay structure itself. Okay? So if I may repeat, uh, the key factors are the employee's judge to fairness, and then the two sources of fairness, which is procedural justice and distributive justice. Now, number three is the procedural justice, referring to, we define them. Now, we're referring to uh, the process by which a decision is rich example uh, the right to an uh, well the right very good example is the right to an attorney the right to an impartial judge or anybody who could meddle uh, or, or you know could connect now with the uh, decision process now number one according to research em employee perception of procedural fairness significantly influences their acceptance to the results. And then the pay procedures are more likely uh, to be perceived as fair if they are consistently applied to all employees and employees participated in the process and appeals procedures are included and the data used are accurate. So, and then applied to internal structures, procedural justice addresses how design and administration decisions are made and whether procedures are applied in a consistent manner. Okay? So, there. And then, number four is the distributive justice. So, defining it, uh, it refers to the fairness of the decision. So, meaning uh, guilty, not guilty. It addresses whether the actual pay differentials among employees are acceptable or not. So, there, no? So, that's uh, the difference. Pay structures uh, change. Uh, okay, so pay structure change in response to... Uh, external factors such as skill shortages so there not there is yes yes and then pay structures established for organizational and economic reasons at an earlier time may be maintained for cultural or uh, political reasons no the resistance to changing the distortion in differentials may require another economic uh, you know job New norms for employee acceptance will probably need to include recognition that people must get used to a constant change, even in internal pay structures. Now, the strategic choices in designing internal structures. So, the basic, basic premise underlying the strategic approach is a fit. Fit matters and is most likely to lead to success. Now, aligned pay structures support the way the work gets done, fit the organization's business strategy even, and are fair to employees. So, that's how we measure it. Now, two strategic choices are involved in internally aligning pay structures. So, number one, how to specifically tailor the organization design and workflow to make the structure. And then number two is how to distribute pay throughout the levels in the structure. So that's how we design the internal structure. Now, tailored versus loosely coupled. So closely tailored structures are appropriate for a low-cost business strategy with following features. Well-defined jobs with detailed tasks to follow and relatively small differences in pay. For example, McDonald's or yeah, uh, Walmart or yeah, any department stores. And, yeah, that's it. And then number two is loosely coupled structures are appropriate for a differentiation business strategy 
that emphasizes uh, constant product innovation and short uh, product design to make to make uh, design to market cycle times so the pay structures need to be flexible and um, it's more loosely linked to the organizations to facilitate a constant change you know? uh, yeah that's it no? adapting to the new trends for example 3m no? the you know adhesive company so that is loosely coupled structures now considered now hierarchical versus egalitarian so how do you uh, yeah, differentiate it egalitarian structures as a pay structure uh, if operate on the belief that all belief that all employees should be treated equally in their pay now this type of structure has fewer levels and in poor small differentials between adjacent levels and between the highest and the lowest paid workers so that is the difference between the two okay uh, hierarchical structures send out the message that the organization values the differences in work content individual skills and contributions to the organization so it features of a uh, the features of a hierarchical pay structure will include among others multiple levels detailed subscription uh, no, of uh, you know subscription of work done at each level and then more opportunities for promotion now egalitarian when replaced by the term averageism remember averageism as in the word average is as done among chinese workers now that brings uh, to light a few problems associated with egalitarian structure <laughs> I don't know why 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 they make uh, mention about the Chinese the workers no, but then apparently averageism no has something to do with the uh, egalitarian you know, equality. Now uh, equal treatment can mean that the more knowledgeable employees feel underpaid. So may mga ganong notions, but uh, it's not absolute actually. It's what is the concept that are just uh, yeah, being imparted here. Now their change in behavior uh, in any will lower overall in, uh, performance even no? so uh, demotivation you know, will happen now the choice between egalitarian and hierarchical uh, structures is rarely either or differences are a matter of degree now, levels can range from many to few differentials can be large or small and the criteria can be based on the child the person or a combination of the two okay equity theory or fairness okay this theory uh, suggests that employees judge the fairness of their organization's internal pay structure by making uh, multiple comparisons so comparing job to similar job i'm sorry comparing to jobs similar to their own that is the internal alignment and then comparing their jobs to others at the same employer another again internal alignment and then uh, comparing their jobs pay against external pay models so that is external competitiveness so see the differences now the result from these comparisons depend in part on the accuracy of the employee employees knowledge of other employees jobs internal structures and external pay level so uh, yeah yeah the result from these comparisons and you know, i would you know command you know, the, uh, the equity theory uh, or fairness in, in, in you know, pay structure and then equity theory could uh, support either egalitarian or hierarchical structures depending on the comparisons and the accuracy of the information about them there so that is equity theory or fairness now we go to a uh, tournament theory or motivation and performance now according to the tournament theory greater differentials between the lower levels and top levels have a more positive effect on motivation and performance as compared to smaller differentials uh, now that is true for people of all levels in all the structures Within limits, the bigger the price for getting to the next level of the structure, 
the greater the motivational impact the structure will have. And then another one is the several study support tournament theory. Why? Because one study reported that giving larger races with a promotion increases the effort and reduces absenteeism. See? Other studies indicate that uh, performance improves with larger differentials at the top level to the structure, thus emphasizing the winner takes all, no? or winner take all idea there. Now, virtually all research supporting hierarchical structure and tournament theory is on situations where uh, individual performance matters most or where demand uh, for cooperation among small group of individuals is relatively very low. Now, studies have also found out that uh, sports teams with uh, practically uh, identical salaries are doing better than with those with the large differentials, along with uh, improving team performance. No? An egalitarian structure will also substantially influence individual performance. See the difference. And now, the egalitarian structures could also uh, reflect a more flexible and supportive organizational culture in which mediocre performers are are, are provided with training and support not to improve themselves. Tournament theory does not directly address turnover. Now research uh, shows uh, that executives were twice likely to leave if uh, the companies had large pay differentials among the leaders. Okay, now we go to uh, institutional model. So in, in the institutional model, copy others. Copy others. Uh, okay, some organization uh, ignore the questions of uh, strategy and simply copy what is called no, and compared the best practices in the industry. Now, examples of such benchmarking uh, behavior uh, include the rush to uh, outsource jobs. Uh, to emphasize teams, to the emphasize individual contribution, and to shift to a competency-based pay system. So these are a very good example of that. Now the institutional model predicts that very few firms are uh, first movers. No, rather they copy innovative practices after innovators learn how to make the practices work, and then the copiers have little concern for alignment even and less for the innovative pay practices so that is how uh, the institutional model as copy others now are giving us now guidance from the evidence i know there are more evidences coming in so the impact of internal structures depends on the context in which they operate now more hierarchical uh, structures are related to, uh, to greater um, performance when the workflow depends more on individual contributors. Now, high performers are less uh, likely to quit under more hierarchical system when pay is based on performance rather than seniority and when people have knowledge of the structure. Now, more egalitarian structures are related to uh, greater performance when uh, close collaboration and sharing of knowledge are required and the impact of any internal structure on organizational performance are, is affected now by the other dimensions of pay model so pay levels competitiveness uh, employee performance contributions the employee knowledge of the pay structure uh, under management these things no uh, yeah and then the following areas need further research now for improvements and validation so the optimal size of the promotional increase or its effect on the behavior or satisfaction or performance of uh, the employee. And the other one is the impact of frequency of uh, promotions with minimal change in the nature of work on the job performance and on the job itself.
Now, uh, we discussed the consequences of the structures. No? So, uh, number one is efficiency. So, an aligned structure can lead can lead to better organizations, rather, organizations' performance. And structures that do not motivate employees to help achieve uh, organizations' objectives and goals need to be considered for redesigning. No? It has to yeah, change no? and redesign it. Uh, yeah, and fit it you know, accordingly. Now, the internal pay structure structures imply the future rewards. Future rewards. No? The size of the differentials between entry and higher level jobs may provide incentives for employees to remain with in the organization, increase their experience and training, and cooperate with co-workers and seek greater responsibility is the key also now for there. And then the number of levels and titles in a career path may, may be rewarding beyond the pay that is attached to their uh, respective titles. Now, in fairness, uh, several researchers uh, argue no, that uh, employees' attitude about fairness of the pay structure influences their work behaviors and efficiency and satisfaction. So, yeah, if you feel that you're not aggrieved and, uh, uh, you know, the pay structure is acceptable and uh, satisfactory, why not? No, So, there. And then also research uh, strengthened and indicates that departures from an acceptable wage structure will affect uh, turnover and then lessen grievances and motivation, uh, increase motivation rather. However, there is no agreement regarding the degree to which these uh, variables are affected either positively or negatively. Now, next is the compliance. No? And compliance, the design and management of internal pay structures must comply with all laws and regulations that apply to the operations of the organization. And then uh, much remains to be learned no, about what we have discussed in this chapter and what is the appropriate number of levels the size of differentials and the criteria for advancing employees through a structure. So these are questions that uh, would come out after the discussions have been provided in chapter two. Uh, I'm sorry, in chapter three. You know. So, but uh, yeah, okay. So I guess uh, I have imparted you know, some of the uh, leading uh, yeah concerns about the chapter three, and I hope uh, to see you again in in our next sessions. Uh, discussing about the next the future chapter so again uh, chapter 3 is defining the internal alignment and the understanding of it that discusses uh, that discusses the internal alignment and how it affects employees managers and employers are important uh, in our learnings in today's uh, lessons so again thank you very much for listening and see you again in our next session thank you